Hey guys, it's the 13th day of beta because it's Friday the 13th. Woo! And yay. I was semi productive this morning. I got some doctor's appointments set up for next week. Holla! And then stuff. I had a friend date. That was fun. It involved a small child, which I like small children, so that was nice. And then I went to see Titanic, which, if you'd like to hear more about, I made a vlog for my collab channel just like a minute ago about that. But in this beta, I'm going to kind of talk about Titanic more, but in a different tone, which was the experience of seeing it in theater for the first time couple things. One, there's all these teenagers there. And I just feel like I need to take a moment and be like, oh my gosh, teenagers and movies. And then realizing that these kids, it was their first time seeing this movie ever. And granted, I saw Titanic pretty late in life. I didn't see it until like my freshman year of college. But it was, yeah, it was just weird realizing that all of these kids, uh, they had never seen it before. And it was very clear because of where they were like gasping and cheering and crying they'd never seen it before and they all like streamed back out of the theater just like oh my gosh it's like yeah you should have known that was going to happen <laughs> are you surprised um so that was just really funny to me and it was they all were like giggling in the i don't know during the previous and stuff like oh my gosh please don't be like this the whole movie but they weren't terrible but it was just so amusing to realize i'm at that point where i'm now like oh all these kids in this movie and I'm really not that much older than them but I feel so much older than them so that was one thing about the movie but the second thing was it's things that I've noticed when I've watched the movie before but I guess I was just thinking about it like the foreshadowing that happens and also the way that they set things up that happen in the beginning of the movie to then when they happen similar later like have flipped the situation and the meaning of all the actions. So, like, spoilers in the beginning of the movie when she's about to jump off the um, boat. It's She's standing on the other side of the railing about to jump and kill herself and um, Jack, like, stops her and saves her and pulls her back over. And then at the end of the movie, they're, like, racing, fighting through this tilting ship to that same spot at the back of the ship and Jack is instead pulling her back over the other way to the outside of the boat to save her that way. And, and the reversal in that, and there was lots of other small things. Um, like in that scene, he said, like, I got you, I got you, I'm not going to let go. And just ways that they then like build that to be able to kind of flip it around and have similar meaning but different meaning in that. And, and even the story arc, obviously, of Rose going from somebody who's wants to die and kill herself to somebody who's like fighting for her survival completely and you know going to pull a whistle out of a dead man's mouth to save her life because Jack um, has inspired her to live fully um, and then I was just thinking about how lots of things do that how that's like a very common story arc even if you take like for instance, in Wicked, the musical, the um, song right before intermission, um, and they're like, I hope you're happy, I hope you're happy now. And then leading that in the beginning as like a cutting remark and how could you and how dare you to then building throughout the song, there's kind of a turning point. And then at the end of the song, they're singing the same words, but it means something different. Like it's actually genuine. No, I, I really hope that you're going to be happy versus like, how dare you? And that kind of cool playing with the same situation, the same words, but meaning something different and how how we, we structure things like this in life and how that's kind of how life is in a way. And um, then I was thinking about chiastic structure because I think that's really cool and um, how, I mean, there's lots of stories that are built on chiastic structure, but interesting, like the Bible has a lot of chiastic structure in it and it's often a way that, like, God works out things in life. And, and if you think about the promises of, like, all things will be made new and um, kind of the reversing of things to, to make all that was 
bad, now good. And and that's basically like that same flow of things where you, you go one way and then you work back and and it's like a repairing of it. I don't know. C.S. Lewis phrases it some way that's really cool. I can't remember what it is right now, but... Death starts working backwards. Yes, death starts working backwards is one way. But there's another way in, a, in The Last of Battle that he phrases it. But that's a good one. It's just like... I don't know. It's cool, and I think it's interesting how we use it in the way that we tell stories and then the way that we think a good story is made and told, and then thinking about, like, the great story and the true story um, with a capital S. And I, and I that it's always a fascinating thing to me, like, what do we can feel is, like, good story, and and why, and where does that come from, and thinking about the one great story that kind of is what causes the reflection of all our little stories that we tell. So that was a ramble of, of six minutes about that. I'm going to go get ready for bed now. Sweet. See you tomorrow. <laughs>